Uh, every time I get up in the morning, my socks get soaking wet. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why'd you do that every time? You know, every time I come to the bathroom, it's soaking wet. Uh, you, what? <laughs> Thanks for that. A Necrim Apothecary is the first one I'm excited for. It's the four mana epic rogue card, which is a two five, as you can see. It requires you to do a combo, so you gotta play something beforehand. Uh, and what it does, it draws a death rattle from your deck, and if you've comboed, you gain that death rattle. So the reason this is so good for rogue, specifically big slash death rattle rogue, two things really. Barnes has been nerfed to the point where you can't really play it in Big Rogue, and this is the perfect replacement for it. It's uh, actually vastly better than Barnes because you're only only pulling the cards that you want, which are Death Rattles. That's what you wanted Barnes to do in the first place. You're also drawing it, so it makes the likes of uh, Kobold Illusionist better. The stat line's great for aggro because you can bonk into two units. Uh, you also take one less damage from um, Explosive Runes, which is also a popular deck right now. And the fact there's two of them, there's also two of these cards in the deck. Obviously you only had one Barnes, so this is the perfect card to put in. Now the combo aspect uh, is obviously a downside, but in Big Rogue you typically want to run double coin. And if you go in second, you've already got a coin, so there's plenty of ways to combo there. You can also use uh, Preps and Vial, Necrom Vial as well. In the deck list so i'll make a deck based around this one it'll be in big rogue so obviously you want to hit sneed sylvanas cobalt illusionist uh vanguard all the ones that you've already got in there and i think that will bring back big rogue to a point where you can play it in wild and have a pretty decent win rate again with it since barnes has gone uh i you know this is the one this is the one rogue card i was most interested in but rogue again got some of the more interesting cards along with Hunter and Paladin in my opinion. Sticking with interest in rogue cards, it's Candle Breath. It's basically sprint with an upside as long as you're holding a dragon. It draws you three cards and each one of those cards costs three less mana than their original cost. Uh, this will be great in a kind of funny shadow cast the rogue. I'm planning on playing this with uh, Galakroid because uh, Galakroid also has a similar effect to that where it draws your cards at a reduced cost, actually zero. So you can have some fun with this. Also the new uh, Flick card that destroys a minion and all other copies in that game, no matter where they are. Uh, we're gonna talk about that one as well in a minute. That one's kind of interesting. So you can make a, a Reno-esque uh, rogue deck and have some sort of like draw benefit with it, have the card reduced, getting a bit of tempo back. I used to run Sprint in that deck anyway. So this is obviously uh, the same cost with, with Prep. So if you think about Prep Sprint, now that prep's nerfed, this will cost about the same. Uh, and if you're holding a Azure Drake or something like that, it's gonna be reduced. So this is another card I'll be playing around with. Speaking of Glocharond, I'm sticking with the Rogue cards. This is the Rogue version. Uh, when it's invoked, it upgrades and draws more cards. Every card drawn by it is zero cost. I think the maximum you can draw is three if you've invoked uh, twice on the upgrade. Now, again, this is just fun in a lot of combo decks, you know, you could do, you could try Malagos Rogue, you could try the Shadowcaster Rogue, uh, you could try Spectral Pillager Combo Rogue, which we'll get to in a minute as well. Uh, that'll be a little bit of uh, fun to try out. Uh, its effect is powerful. I think it's more powerful and more practical than the Death Knight Valera. Uh, for that reason, uh, I thought that was an interesting one. It's one of the more interesting ones from the, uh, the set of Glocarons. Currently, Warrior has like draw cards, give them plus attack uh, and health, and uh, the Priest versions are destroy minions. Uh, and we'll look at that. Uh, we'll look at Priest a little bit later because I think one card could be quite busted. I mentioned Spectral Pillager before. Uh, the Spectral Pillager is the card that uh, deals damage based on how many cards you've played uh, that turn. So, what you can do here, obviously, if you've invoked twice, you'll get three coins into the hand. Uh, now this is a battle cry, so if you play Spirit of the Shark, 
uh, you're going to get the benefit of this card giving you six coins and you're also going to get the benefit of spectral pillager going off twice because that's a combo card and obviously the more coins that you play the bigger the combo is going to be uh, this will obviously have synergy with glacharond so you'll draw some stuff for zero so you might even hit a pillager or a shark in that uh that scenario so i think for that reason uh it'll synergize with each other and be a little bit of fun uh that's what i'm most looking forward to obviously you know i'm looking forward to playing rogue i think the rogue cards are, are the most interesting currently revealed obviously i think we're about halfway through the set uh but there's one more rogue card we're gonna go over flick sky shiv is a battle cry minion that destroys another minion think of vile spine without the combo so vile spine you might be paying six mana for vile spine because that's a combo piece this is just a battle cry, so for six mana, you destroy a minion with an upside, or maybe downside, depending on if you forget about something. Uh, so the way Flick is worded, it destroys a minion and all other copies wherever they are. Now that would include, by the sounds of it, your own copies. So if you destroy a, let's just say you destroy a Mad Scientist, for example. If you're running Mad Scientist in your deck, you're also going to destroy your copies. Now, this obviously has some cool implications because you could play, if you're playing against like a fellow Reno deck, you could play your copy of Reno, then destroy it. Also, if you're playing against the combo deck, you can destroy a key piece of their combo. For example, Sorcerer's Apprentice, that's a big one. You can also destroy Flame Wakers, that's also a big one. So you could rat and do this. One question I had, the way this is worded, uh, it's worded in a similar fashion to uh, Cthulhu. Now, the way Cthulhu worked was, even if Cthulhu had died, you could still use the Cthulhu battle cries to buff him. So technically, Cthulhu's in the graveyard. Uh, and he's still being buffed by the Cthulhu cards. My question is, if I were to destroy a rag in Big Priest, could they resurrect it? This is worded in a similar fashion, so I'm wondering, if I were to kill a minion, could it be resurrected again? I see, personally, the way that's worded, I don't think so. But we'll find out when the uh, expansion launches. Moving on to priest cards, uh, we have Fate Weaver, which is a dragon. Uh, it costs four, it's a free six, so it's very well started. Uh, fits in to potentially a lot of dragon combo decks. There were a, a bunch of dragon combo decks that would either use Mind Blast or they'd use Inner Fire uh, to finish off their opponents. This slots in more, I think, to a Mind Blast type of deck. This is a insanely good in the combo deck because you can use it with Bran and there's two copies of it. So it, it does a better job than Forreston. The only downside to it is you have to invoke, uh, but Priest has an extremely good invoke card. Uh, so it can do that quite easily. And their version of a Glacrond uh, is a very good version of it. it. It destroys random minions based on how many times you've invoked. So I can see this being used in a Glacrond dragon combo deck. Um, I'll probably use it to try get some like eh, some stupid stuff you can do with maybe like death rattles and zombie chow and killing off your opponent with heals. Out of the set for a while, I think this one's going to be extremely annoying. Uh, because I talked about uh, Fate Weaver there, I thought I'd move on to Time Rip. Uh, Time Rip is a five mana invoke card, and it just flat out destroys a minion. Not the most interesting. Priest gets another removal, which is extremely frustrating because Priest doesn't need any more removal in legacy sets. Obviously their base set is uh, is shit, so uh, they need to have these removal cards printed. Uh, and Time Rip is just basically a five mana flat out removal minion. So if you think of like um, other cards like Blast Crystal or even in Tomb, stuff like that. Uh, this one's pretty well statted for just flat out removal minion, basically. It's like Assassinate with an upside because you're... Um, invoking so that's why i think this one will be used in the uh, invoke priest decks uh, moving on to hunter hunter gets a lot of powerful dragon combination cards like corrosive breath and discover some dragons uh the card i'm most interested in though uh for reno hunter is the uh, dwarven sharpshooter this card uh, is basically a reprint uh of a i think it's steam weedle sniper so i can't remember the exact name of it i'll put it there uh, but this is a one mana one free so probably the best stats you can get for a one drop with those with the effect that it has uh which is excellent because you go you play this on one pair of power on two 
or you play it on turn three, hero power with this unit up. Uh, this will be great in Reno Hunter because I usually run like the uh, the one drop uh, candle shot, and you could use this instead. I think this is great. It's probably one of the the better uh, one drops you can use in the Reno Hunter deck list. Uh, not an original idea because they've used it before, but it's started to the point now where it's on curve and a lot better. Lastly, we're going to look at Valdris, the legendary Warlock card. Uh, this is one of the most interesting cards printed because it, it's it's the first time Hearthstone has ever increased uh, a limited resource in the game. So your hand size used to just be 10 cards and no more. Uh, this card is a 7 mana 4-4. Four, four. Draw 4 cards, so it's like sprint with a body. Uh, increase your hand size to 12. So this is um, this is the first time we've seen like a limited factor go beyond what it was originally in the game. So, you know, maybe in the future we might see Druid get additional 2 mana crystals at 12 mana. We might see an increased board size, maybe. But yeah, that, that's... That's going down in the future because you know I'd never think I never thought I'd see uh, hand size increase to twelve. So in wild, uh, I've done, this is just good in wild because it draws four cards and it's got a body attached to it. Uh, it's also good because it's not a demon, so you won't actually pull it from like void cores or, or whatever. Uh, I think a nice little uh, design choice for this would have been to make it a demon, and that way it would have disrupted some void. Call of plays in wild, but um, that's fine, I guess, for now because we don't know how this is going to perform. Uh, but obviously, in a handlock, it would work with mountain giants, but with turn seven, that's a little bit, a uh, little bit too late at that point, I'd say. Uh, it's just a good card for what it does by itself. It just draws four. You could even use this in maybe like I don't know, like a mecha cthulhu uh, lock, just to draw quicker. Uh, it'll prevent you from being overdrawn as well. A big problem with uh, with Warlocks and Wilds, sometimes a Naturalize or a, a Colite Oracle can disrupt your hand. This might prevent it a little bit less. I mean, this might prevent it because you will now have a max size of 12, so it's harder to mill you if you use your cards quick enough. Uh, maybe I can see this being played in a Cthulhu lock uh, for the time being, oh, but hopefully it'll spawn a more interesting deck type or more uh, interesting like reno type of deck uh also it works with the warlock quest so you can actually um do a, a bigger plot twist as well so the larger large potential for plot twist so out of the current cards that have been released they're the cards i'm most interested in coming into the wild set just because there's some uh, potential for to do like some funky stuff with those cards so um as the new cards come out, and if anything else catches my eye, I'll keep you updated. Thanks for joining me. Look out for uh, updated big rogue lists and the Shadowcaster lists. One of the things I want to do is use Flick and Shadowcaster to com completely destroy my opponent's deck. Um, so look out for that one as well, and I'll see you guys in a bit.